is Jo and I'm a stamp carver. I've been carving stamps for almost 10 years now. If you want to subscribe, I've got lots of other videos that I've already made, more to come. And if you want to join me on a carve along, you can join by signing up in the link down below in the description. So today I bought some things from the Family Dollar in the United States that I'll be using to show how to carve a stamp. Um, the first thing is the important thing is the actual stamp carving material and today it is the pink pearl eraser. So this was $1.50 in US dollars from the dollar store. Great erasers. It'd be interesting to see how they carve. Uh, for ink they don't sell stamp pads so I did pick up some scented markers and you'll see what that looks like a little bit later in the video. Uh, you always need pencils. They didn't sell them in um, ones or twos so I ended up buying a set. Everyone can always use some pencils. Um, I used a little notebook for printing my stamps in and as I mentioned um, unfortunately a lot of dollar stores aren't selling I guess sharp objects anymore so this is from a previous video again where I couldn't find a knife to carve with and this one um, I'm using because it was very inexpensive it was I think two dollars from Hobby Lobby for a pair of two of these and it's a box cutter style carving implement. You might even have that at home if you want to try out. It's important when you're looking for one of these that it actually has a lock in it. You can see there's a lock there that keeps this locked in place. So that's what I have here today. So I'm going to get started carving. The first thing I'm going to do is check these guys out. So I'm planning to do a video about erasers altogether because um, carving material can be very expensive if you buy the custom, or not custom made, but more the uh, material that's specifically meant for stamp carving. These are your standard pink pearl erasers. Um, and I think probably everyone's carved one of these before uh, in school. I remember taking the heads of pencils and pinching, pulling out the eraser that was in the pencil pinching the metal piece and, and putting that in to the erasers to carve it. So that's always, always reminds me of middle school. So these are just your standard mechanical pencils. I've mentioned in other videos that um, my preference is actually um, the, so this is an HB pencil, which is your standard hardness of lead. Um, I like the ones that you can use that uh, have a different hardness. The softer leads actually transfer better. So we have these and I want to tell you a couple things about eraser. So if you're going to, going to carve with an eraser, the problem with erasers is that the edges are rounded. Now that's not a problem for it being an eraser, but what the problem can be, and you'll see as we carve this, is that if, we, if the design gets too close to that edge, the edge rounds off, and if you carve right into where it curves, when you go to stamp it and print it, it might not transfer properly. So that's something we have to watch out for today. Now, how am I gonna get a, um, if you've not been here before, you might not have seen how to get um, a um, design onto the, the carving rubber. So that's easy enough to do. This is the most simple way to get a design onto carving rubber and all you need is paper and a regular pencil. So I'm actually gonna tear a page out of here. To carve this. So if I measure this, the problem is, because it's rounded here, rounded here, and then on all the edges. So what I might do first is actually cut it so that I have exact dimensions. I'm cutting it right before where it curves off so that I can get a good sense of where, the, what the size of this thing is. And I'm not gonna carve down the sides, I'm just gonna cut those two pieces off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start this pencil up. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do a basic pattern today Maybe one that repeats or something like that. 
Okay, so there's the basic outline. So I'm gonna draw something and I will be right back when I'm done. Okay, so I'm just making a geometric design. I'm not doing anything that's actually recognizable today. I'm hoping to make just sort of a repeating pattern with this that um, I can actually uh, print a large page of. So we'll see how it turns out, but mostly I'm doing this so I can see how well it transfers and how well um, this actual rubber carves. So to transfer this, because this paper is so big, I'm actually going to lock this in place. So you can see it's locked right there. See right there, two, there. And I'm gonna cut this out, basically a little bit around where I transferred. The paper, like that. Okay, so with the pencil, the lead actually comes right off of the back of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take one of the markers Here's why, this creates a nice surface to rub on the back of it. So all you do to transfer this is you flip it over and center it on top. And you hold it still with one hand and you rub on the other side. So you never really can tell with this type of paper if you're getting all of it rubbed off. The page will start curling you can lift it up if you hold it down with the other finger to see how well, so it doesn't misalign and continue to uh, rub. And there we go. So it's a bit of geometric design. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but we'll test it. So again, I'm going to lock this into place and then I'm going to see how well this carves. So I'm cutting through. Now, the one thing I already know is gonna be not my favorite about this particular eraser, which is not really true of other erasers, is that erasers erase by sort of, when you rub and create thick friction, making something that peels. And if it's peeling or, and into pills, that can happen when you're carving and that can happen when you're stamping and that's sort of when you're buying carving rubber that's meant for carving you're essentially buying a different formulation of one of these that is meant to not pill up like that and you can tell the peeling i mean just by rubbing on the side there you can see the pill on there so that's the problem so i'm going to finish carving this and if you want to know how to carve you can check out the other videos in my channel but for this one i'm just going to carve this up and i'll be right back okay so a very quick patterny type stamp carved it out um, like I said it's kind of pilling a lot which is not ideal but let's see how it stamps so um, if you don't have ink which is also a very expensive part of stamping you can always use markers um, particularly for pattern type things because the patterns actually um, take well to sort of uh, variegated colors, so it makes it nice. So I'm just going to pull that out and see how we go. So let me stamp this up and show you how it prints. So it's not the best print, or it's not the best carving rather. The print is great actually. Um, it's difficult to carve with this. So. One of the problems with carving with a box cutter rather than an X-Acto blade or a gouge, particularly this one, and I mentioned it in the last video, is that this angle means it's very hard to carve around curves 
because there's so much of the blade in the um, rubber so it doesn't like to turn so it leaves a jagged and uneven line and it tends to steer your carving away from you it's a little tricky so let me continue making this pattern and see how it turns out So there you go, the pattern's starting to emerge. And you can see the lines going across the page and that sort of thing. So um, what I would say is if you're going to uh, buy these pink pearls, be very careful because they are very pilly. And you can even see when I'm using markers to ink these that it's becoming more and more ragged. You can see the lines are not as clear for stamping as the first one. And that's because as I'm drawing back and forth with the marker, it's pilling the eraser. So that doesn't really happen with um, the, the rubbers that are meant for stamp carving, um, but these would still be perfect if you're using um, a, a real ink pad that's meant for stamping because you'd be pressing down on the ink and not rubbing it. You should never rub your uh, stamp across the surface of an ink pad because it can hurt the stamp. So anyway. But you can get started, test your hand out with some carving with material from the dollar store. It's a lot of fun to carve in. If you do a complicated lengthy design, it's very meditative and I really enjoy it. So I hope uh, by sharing these types of things with you, I'm sharing my love of carving and maybe are getting you started. So how was that? If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. At the end of the day, there are also carve alongs with designs that I have available for you. You can sign up down below and members of that community have the ability to download carving sheets with the design and tips for how to carve. If you have any questions, let me know, but otherwise I'll see you in a future video. Bye-bye.